reclassification, and this is why 100% of entrepreneurs that don't understand this will overpay their taxes this year. In the past, we found 93% of people overpaying their tax, but with the new tax plan that came in from Trump, we're finding pretty much everyone's missing out on this. Reclassification has four key areas. The first area is how do you take your active income and make it passive? Passive income could be you choose an S corporation. You pay yourself a reasonable salary, which is what would you pay someone else to do your job, not what you're worth, and you take the rest in distributions. Those distributions avoid self-employment tax, which saves you at least 3.2%, and for many of you, 15.3%, just how you write the check to yourself, right? So that's turning active income to passive. Or if you owned your building, you could charge yourself a high rate. Or if you could do anything that creates investment income versus active income, it's going to lower your taxes. Second thing is taking ordinary income and turning it into capital gains. So Trump misquoted this when he was in the debates with Hillary. He said, uh, Warren Buffett pays less tax than his secretary. That's actually not true. Warren Buffett pays a lower tax rate than his secretary, but pays more taxes. The reason he has a lower tax rate is almost all of his income comes from capital gains, which is half of the rate of what his ordinary income would be. So two ways you can do that, just as examples. That International Sales Corp, anytime you're selling something internationally, you run it through an International Sales Corp, and that will be taxed at capital gains instead of ordinary income. Or anyone heard of a captive insurance agency before? So you can actually put money in pre-tax into something like that, hold on to it for at least 12 months, but if you don't have an insurance claim, it's you and your money that's your insurance policy, not an actual insurance policy, you're the company. If you don't have that claim, you get to take it out as a capital gain, therefore cutting your tax in half, right? So that's ordinary income to capital gains. The first one was taking active to passive. The third one I like even better. The third one is how do you take taxable income and make it tax-free? Anyone against that? All right, so here's how you do it then. Charitable trust would be one of the ways you could do it. So let's find any charity that you feel any uh, of, you know, affinity for, that you like. You can actually donate highly appreciated assets like businesses, real estate, or stock. And when you donate it to the charity, you get a partial tax deduction the moment you donate it. You don't have to sell the business or sell the real estate. You get a partial tax deduction for the donation. When you sell the business, there's zero tax upon the sale. None. And it funds this trust. You're the first one that benefits from the trust, not the charity. And you can take between 5% or 50% income off of that full sell per year, depending on how you invest the money and how well the investment does. So rather than paying tax, you're getting a tax deduction. Zero tax when you sell it, you get a benefit from it your entire life, and when you die, the charity is supposed to keep at least 10%. So would you rather give the charity of your choice 10% or the government 37%, right? So that's one tax-free strategy. Another one could be if you want to sell your business but not to some outside entity, you can actually use something called an ESOP, Employee Stock Option Program. You could sell your business internally to your employees. Banks will actually finance it for you, and you'll pay no tax when they buy that stock. That's another example. Or an installment sale when you go to sell your business. Look, anyone in here that ever plans on selling their business, you need to know what your tax strategy is today, not when you sell.